Working as a driver for DoorDash has been a pretty good side job. Ever since I moved to Converse, Texas, I mainly pick up deliveries inside of San Antonio. But sometimes I will find ones that take me out of Converse and a bit into the country. Now I used to not mind those deliveries, and I would pretty much accept any job that I could handle. But after this one incident that brought me to a Texas ranch, I will no longer go outside of the cities of Converse and San Antonio. It was around 8.30 p.m., and I picked up an order that brought me out to the middle of nowhere. That's the crazy thing about Texas. One second you can be in a big city, and the next, there is practically nothing around you for miles. As I drove around looking for the entryway onto this massive property, I began following a large fence that ran alongside the street. I figured the fence would eventually lead me to the entryway, and I was correct. I pulled into a small dragway that led me to a large electric gate with a number pad that required a code to get in. I wasn't given a code, so I decided to contact the person who sent out the order. They responded within a minute with a text that read, the code, pound 6660. Welcome to the family. I was confused by that last line, but I leaned out of my car window and punched in the code, chuckling to myself at the fact that they used 666 for a code. After a second, the gate made a loud banging sound and then slowly slid open across rust-covered tracks. The gate opened to reveal a long winding pathway with trees lining both sides of it. They must have been planted there by the owners a while back because they looked oddly out of place compared to the barren fields that surrounded the ranch. I began to make my way down the driveway, and I couldn't help but shake the creepy feeling that was coming over me. I was on edge, which I'm glad for because as I rounded one of the small bends, in the middle of the driveway my headlights revealed a tall, pale man wearing a dirt-covered black suit. We stared at each other for a moment without either of us moving. I was in shock. Eventually I got the courage to roll my window down a bit and yell out, Did you order the takeout? But he didn't answer. All he did was step to the side and point down the driveway, as if telling me to continue. Reluctantly I did. I continued down the pathway, and behind every couple of trees, I can't help but think that I see more people dressed up in a similar suit as the man who had been standing in the driveway. Still, I continued on. Finally, I could see a house in front of me, but as if it was something out of my worst nightmare. Standing on the porch of the large house and along the outside of the driveway were at least a dozen or more men, all dressed in dirt-covered suits, some black and some gray. I froze. I didn't know what to do, but I knew for a fact that nothing could make me get out of my car at that moment. After sitting in the driveway, staring at the group of strange men, I noticed that one of them had something in their hand. My eyes widened as I realized what it was, and I quickly threw the car into reverse. One of the men on the porch was carrying a rifle of sort. I wasn't close enough to see what kind it was, but I knew it was a firearm of some sort. I slammed my foot on the gas and began swinging my car around in reverse to turn around so that I could drive out of there as fast as I could. At that point, I noticed a few of the men now begun walking toward my car. After fully turning around, I put my car into drive and began flooring it. I let out a scream as I heard a loud bang followed by my rear windshield shattering. I leaned forward and made my head as low as possible while still being able to see over the dashboard. As I made my way down the driveway, every tree that I passed I could see a man stepping out from behind it and walking toward the path that I had been driving down. Luckily, none of them seemed to be armed. I made it out of the driveway and onto the road, and as I passed the still open gate, I noticed that it began to close. They were trying to trap me inside with them. I sped down the road and called 911 as I made my way to the police station and explained to them what just happened to me. They were confused when I told them the address because they were familiar with it and it had apparently been an abandoned property for the past decade. By the time the officers made it to the ranch, however, they said it appeared to still be abandoned and there was no one around. Three hours after I finally got home, around 2.30 am, I received a text message saying, Where'd you go? 
It was just getting fun. That was the last time I ever took an order outside of the city. I started working for DoorDash shortly before the pandemic hit, about two and a half years ago, and at first I loved it. I was fresh out of high school and earning a decent amount of money making deliveries throughout Brooklyn and the surrounding boroughs. The best part of the job was being able to set my own hours, and since I had nothing better to do, I just worked as much as I could and earned as much as I could while it was possible. The only reason I stopped was that I lost my car and couldn't afford to get a new one without getting a different, less mobile job. You see, I was doing my usual routine and waiting for an order to be placed that I could pick up and make a couple of dollars, and when an order finally came through, I was quick to snatch it and begin making my way to the pickup location. It was a pizza place that I was familiar with, so finding parking to pick up the food wasn't an issue at all, and by the time it was ready to be picked up, I was there grabbing it. I made my way back to my car as fast as I could, letting the person who ordered the pizza know that their food was picked up and on the way. I looked at my phone and saw that the delivery was to an apartment building a couple blocks over, and in no time, I was en route with the food. It took me about six minutes to get to the block that the apartment building was located on, and luckily for me, street parking wasn't too bad at that time of day and I managed to find a spot that was right next to the building. Now this was a no-contact delivery, which meant that I was to leave the food at the door, take a picture of it, notify the person who ordered the food that their pizza was downstairs, and then they were responsible for coming to get it. So I walked up to the door and placed the food in a safe spot, and as I was taking my phone out of my pocket, I noticed a group of young men who looked to be no older than 16 down on the corner. I couldn't help but notice they all kept looking over at me. Now in my mind, I figured that they were just thinking about trying to take the food. So I wasn't concerned for my safety at all, and I continued about my business. I took my phone out and began taking a picture of the food, and then I even called the number that I was given for the person who ordered the food to let them know that their food was downstairs. I didn't want them to miss out on any of the delicious pizza. As I hung up the phone, I took another look down the corner of the block, and this time I saw the entire group had been staring my way. I'm not sure why, but this made me feel really uneasy, and I figured that it was time for me to go. As I went to turn toward my car, out of my peripheral vision I could see the group had started moving. They were heading toward me. Again though, in my head, these kids just wanted the food, so I tried not to freak out and continued heading to my car. That was when I heard it. One of the young men yelled out to me, Hey, mister. I tried to ignore it, but then I heard it again. Hey, mister, hang on a minute. To this day, I'm not sure why, but I stopped in my tracks and turned to face the group that was trying to get my attention. As I turned, though, I quickly learned what their intentions were. As soon as I was facing them, I heard three sounds that almost sounded like small fireworks popping off, and at the same time, I saw three muzzle flashes from a small handgun that one of the teenagers was carrying. I didn't feel anything at first, but when my leg buckled underneath me, I looked down and knew right away that I had been hit. I fell to the floor, and the pain began to kick in. I screamed out for help, thinking that surely I was about to be killed for some unknown reason. I was somewhat thankful, however, when the group ran past me and straight to my car which still had the keys inside. I heard the sound of people around me screaming as the car pulled off. The person who had ordered the food had come outside by that point, and they were the ones who called the ambulance for me. I never got that car back, but thankfully, I was still able to walk after all was said and done, and I definitely learned a lesson about being aware of my surroundings. Back when I first moved away for college, my mom and dad bought me this beat-up old Toyota Matrix so I could drive home whenever I'd wanted. I grew to hate the old piece of trash after a while, but it got me from point A to B, and it helped me get a job as a delivery driver for a pizza place, so I'll always appreciate the gesture. But then one night, when I was making a delivery, 
Something happened that meant that from that night on, I never got into the driver's seat of it ever again. So like I said, I'm making deliveries one night, and I'd just gotten back to my car after dropping off a bunch of pizzas at an apartment building, when I suddenly realized I hadn't locked the passenger side door. And the only reason I realized I hadn't locked the door was because this guy opens up the door and climbs into my car. Then right as I'm about to tell the guy to get out, I see he has a gun. I'm too scared to even say anything, and he just points it right in my face and says all out of breath, drive. As I'm pulling into the street, literally trembling in my seat, I see these two cops sprinting out of an alley in my rear view, and that's when it hits me that they were probably chasing him, and they probably had enough time to call in my license plate. Turns out I was dead right about that, because the next thing I know, I see flashing lights in the rear view. I didn't even have to look over at the guy, I just see him raise the gun up, pointing it at me, and he says, if you stop this car, I'll blow your head off. So I drove, and drove and kept driving until we were out in the suburbs. The whole time, the cops are tailing, and they're not shouting like pull over or whatever through their bullhorns, or whatever you call it. And I figured it's because they know that the guy basically carjacked me, and that there's a hostage situation going on. The whole time the guy's like, drive faster, and all I can say is, I can't, this thing's a piece of trash. If I put my foot down, the engine might freaking give out. So he's content to just delay the inevitable for as long as he could. I don't know exactly how long we were driving because the little digital clock was busted, but after a while we started to see fields and stuff. Then my gas light starts blinking, and I tell the guy that if we don't at least try and stop for gas, that we were eventually just going to come to a rolling stop. He tells me to stop at the next gas station we see, so that's exactly what I do, but not before the guy uses his phone to call 911, telling the operator exactly what's going on, and to tell the cops that if they come near the car while we're topping up our gas, he's going to kill the hostage, Emi. We eventually pull into this gas station in the middle of nowhere, and I'm absolutely terrified. But I ask him if he wants me to get out to top off the tank. He looks around and sees it's one of those pumps that stays locked unless you pay first, so he says no, but he has to think of something out before he lets me get out of the car. The cops are keeping a safe distance while this is going on, as they obviously thought the guy was straight up ready to kill me and I'd be lying if I said I didn't think that too. The whole time they're shouting over their mix like, let the hostage go, we can work something out, and no one has to die over this Malcolm. Just surrender, and we'll get you help. He's stalling the whole time, pointing the gun to my head every so often to warn the cops off, and I swear that every time he did it, I thought he was going to pull the trigger and just end it. But looking back, if he did that, the cops would have just swarmed the car and shot him, or at least I think they would have anyway. Then there came a point where I could see that he was trying to work out how to get out of the mess he'd gotten himself into. He knew he couldn't get out of the car to get the clerk to unlock the pumps, as they'd ran for cover as soon as they saw that it was a dangerous situation, and there was no way for him to get their attention. Then he seemed convinced that if I got out of the car, I'd run off to the cops like right away, which to be fair, was my number one escape plan at the time. He asked me how far we'd go if we just took off with the gas I had in the tank, and I told him about a mile or two, not far at all. And he lets out this real deep sigh, like a balloon deflating or something, which I suppose was exactly what was happening. He was all out of ideas, he knew this was the end of it. And right then, I realized that was the point that he was at his most dangerous. I was pretty much convinced that I was going to die by that point, having gotten it into my head that the guy was going to just go out in a blaze of glory by shooting me and then unloading the rest of his ammo onto the cops. Then when I heard him say himself, screw it, and he did something to the gun, like cock it or take the safety off, I thought to myself, this is it. This is how my life ends, in a trashy car with some loser maniac. I shut my eyes, felt my hands gripping the steering wheel so hard I could feel it shaking, 
and then bang. Only a second later, instead of feeling, well, nothing, I found I could open my eyes. But the first thing I saw when I opened them was a few specks of blood on the dash near the passenger side. Then when I turned, I instantly started dry heaving, because the guy had obviously put the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger because there was a ton of blood and chunks of brain matter all over the ceiling of my car. I opened up the door and was puking with my hands raised above my head while I heard the cops shouting get down on the ground. I had to lie in my own puke, man, just lie there while they ran over with their guns on me, just in case I was somehow in on it. It sounds crazy, but I really didn't mind, knowing it was all over, that I was safe. Well, relatively anyway, it was all gravy by that point. Like I don't even think I can really describe that kind of relief in actual words, I literally felt high off of it. You see and hear about people crying in the aftermath of stuff like that, and I guess that's just how they deal with the emotion. But to me it kind of felt like I'd won something, like I'd beat the carjacker by surviving or whatever. Anyway, I better sign off before this starts sounding too abstract, but I can definitely say I wouldn't wish that kind of experience on anyone, ever. I am a pizza delivery driver. This was by far the scariest thing to happen to me. It took place about one year ago. I was working on a Thursday night, which were usually decently busy. I made quite a few deliveries, and the later it got, the more things calmed down. At about one in the morning, I got a delivery for a cheese pizza. I put it into my car and drove to the location, which was about 10 minutes away. It was in an area of town which I rarely delivered to and was a little more run down. I got to the address which was a two-story house with a pretty decent sized yard and many overgrown plants and trees. It looked a little bit run down like most houses in the area and had a front porch that seemed to wrap around the house. I got out of my car, grabbed the pizza, and walked up the driveway to the house. Then I walked up the steps to the door and rang the doorbell. About 30 seconds went by, and I was about to ring the bell again when the door started to open. A man answered. He was fairly large and bald, and looked to be in his fifties. He just stood there staring at me for a second. I said I had his pizza and handed it to him. He looked almost surprised and said, Oh, Ock, that's nice. Then he just looked around. He just seemed a little bit strange to me. Then he said to me that he had to get some cash to tip me, and he would be right back. He went back inside and closed the door. I stood there waiting for a good two or three minutes, but the man still didn't return. I was thinking about just leaving when I heard some noise and figured the man must be coming back. But when I listened closer, it wasn't coming from inside, it was coming from outside on the porch. I looked around to the direction of the noise. Then I saw from the side of the house on the porch three men approaching me about 30 feet away. I guess it was just an instinct, but as soon as I saw them, I turned and sprinted back down the porch to the driveway. When I did, I heard all the men start to chase after me. I ran as fast as I could to my car and unlocked it and then jumped inside. I frantically started the engine and stepped on the gas. As soon as my car started moving forwards, the men reached me. I felt one of them kick my back door and another one tried opening the door on the other side, but I was just barely able to drive away. I sped out of the neighborhood and all the way back to the pizza place. I have to think that the pizza delivery was some sort of trap to lure me into getting robbed, or maybe even worse. I haven't delivered to that area much since, but when I do, I'm extra careful. I am a 21-year-old female. Around three years ago, when I turned 18, I decided to get a job as a pizza delivery driver. We lived in a small town and there wasn't much, but there was a little pizza place. My older brother had worked there as a pizza delivery driver the year before. I went in one day to ask for an application to work there. The owner was a middle-aged man named Gary. He told me I was hired as soon as I asked for the application. I thought he must be joking, so I laughed, but then he said he was serious. 
I remember my brother had said that Gary was a little weird, but I didn't really mind as long as I had a job. I got trained the next week, and soon after was my first real day on the job. I was scheduled to work a night shift, and when I arrived, it was just me, Gary, and another kid that I went to high school with named Mike. Like I said, it was a small place and a small town, so it wasn't usually that busy. I waited around and swept the floors for a few minutes before an order for a delivery came in. How it would usually work is Gary would make the pizzas and then the drivers would deliver them. When the pizza was done, I was told to deliver it. So I took the address and then the pizza and got into my car. But when I did, Gary followed me. He told me he wanted to ride with me and make sure I did the delivery correct. I was a little annoyed because I knew I would get it right and I didn't want him going with me. I thought it would be really awkward, and Gary just kind of gave me the creeps. He was the boss though, so I had to do what he told me to. I got in and drove to the address without a problem. Gary didn't really say anything during the drive, he just watched me. We arrived at the house and I got out, and gave them the pizza. Gary stayed in the car and waited. When I got back to my car that was parked on the street, I saw that Gary was in the driver's seat now and was motioning for me to get in the passenger side. I got in and asked him why he was driving. He said he needed to show me something. I was getting a bad feeling and I really didn't like Gary driving my car. I asked him again what he was doing, this time with a more stern tone in my voice, but he didn't answer me this time and focused his eyes on the road. He started driving back but then made a turn that I realized was not the right way to go back. Then Gary spoke, but his tone of voice changed. He said, just shut up. I knew then that I was in trouble. I feared for what Gary might do, and he was much bigger than me. He took a road that led more into the wilderness, and we drove for several minutes. Then I saw a stop sign coming up. I did just what I felt I had to do. And as soon as the car came down to a slow enough speed, I opened the door and got out, and then I ran as far away as I could. I started running in some grass, and then sort of a wooded area. As I was running, I heard his door open, and I heard him shouting, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. That made me run even faster. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew I needed to get away. I ran for as long as I could before running out of breath and then I hid behind a tree. I didn't hear him or anything, so I decided to take out my phone and call my mother. I told her what had happened, and she had me turn my location on so she could pick me up. She arrived about 15 minutes later, and then called the police. My car and Gary had both vanished. He ended up being found and arrested a week later. My car was found in his garage. His restaurant was shut down, and I ended up getting a job at a local grocery store instead. I recently moved across the country to a new town to go to school. I was able to land a job as a pizza delivery driver pretty easily. I've done this job before, and I like it because it's relatively easy, and I make good money on tips. I work a lot of really late night shifts. A couple of weeks ago, I was working and at about 2 a.m. an order came in. It was for a large cheese pizza. At that hour, it was just a couple of us working, so I made the pizza myself and then put it in my car and went to deliver it. I didn't know the area very well, so I would always put the address in on my phone and then just follow the directions. I got in my car and typed it in. It said it was a 15-minute drive. As I drove, it seemed to be taking me into the middle of nowhere. I drove for about 10 minutes through woods with not a building or house in sight. Then finally, I was supposed to turn onto a little dirt road that I could barely see. If it hadn't showed up on my map, I would have almost certainly missed it. I slowed down and then turned onto the little dirt road. The map showed me continuing on this road for about one more mile, and then I would take a left and the destination would be there. I began driving down the dirt road, which was surrounded by woods. Then suddenly, my phone lost signal. I wasn't all that surprised being so far out from the city, 
but I was concerned because I needed to find the house to deliver the pizza. I kept driving very slowly and looked for a road on the left side. Finally, I saw it, and I turned. The road was another dirt one, but the woods on each side was even more dense. It was very eerie being out there on that road at that time of night, especially not knowing where I was. I drove down the road very slowly, looking on both sides for a house or some kind of building for whoever ordered a pizza out here, but all I saw was trees from the dense woods and some grass. I still had no service at all on my phone, but I knew I had to be close to where the delivery was supposed to be. It was very dark and hard to see, with the only lights coming from my headlights. I wasn't seeing any kind of buildings at all. I started to get a really creepy feeling being out there, and after about five minutes of driving down that road looking, I decided to turn around and go back, because I could clearly see that there was no buildings. I drove my car back to the other dirt road, and then back to where I had signaled before. At last, I was finally able to get connection on my phone, and when I did, I looked at the map again, but the address had been erased, and it was not there. I found the card that I had wrote the address on and put it back into my phone, but this time it said address not found. I decided I would just head back and try to figure out what was going on. When I got back to the store, I showed my boss the address and told him what happened. He looked surprised when I gave him this information, then he told me that there are no houses or buildings in that area at all. I went back to look at the order that had come in, but it was gone. I chalked it up to a lack of sleep, but to this day, I really don't know how to explain what happened. Maybe I was just really tired, but it was still a really creepy experience. Growing up in a small town in Colorado, there weren't a ton of options for work as a 19-year-old who didn't go to college. So when I got my license, I ended up grabbing a job for one of the local diners that I used to love eating at. They had a delivery position, and I also bust tables when there were no orders to be delivered. The radius for delivery wasn't too large, only about three and a half miles. What happened was that the diner got a delivery order, and right away I recognized the address. It was one of our regulars, and after their food was made, it would only be a 15-minute drive for me. When I got in my car, I didn't even have to use the GPS because I knew the exact house I was going to. It was a small single-story house that was in the middle of the woods. I loved this house's long gravel driveway. I would always see small critters like squirrels and other animals running through the trees and along the stone wall that lined the path. The driveway would then open up to an area that had room for about four cars to park in, which I loved because they only ever had one car in the driveway, so I had enough space to simply turn around instead of having to reverse and make a turn. As I made my way down the driveway that evening, I was surprised that I didn't see any animals scurrying around, but I figured since it's getting cold again, it was just that time of year, so I drove all the way down the driveway and pulled in front of the house. As I got out of the car, I couldn't help but feel like someone or something was staring at me. I just brush it off as the owner looking out of their window though and continue to round my car to the passenger side to get the food. As I'm leaning into the passenger side of the car, I heard the sound of something moving around behind me. I stood up straight and quickly turned to see what it was, but there was nothing there. I shrugged and continued to get the food out of my car this time though as I was closing the passenger door, I heard what was an unmistakable deep growling noise coming from the trees. I tried my best to look into the dark forest where the noise was coming from as I slowly backed toward the house that was when I saw it a medium-sized black bear came running. Out of the woods I could hear the snarling coming from it with each step. It took a turn and sprinted toward the house, and when I reached the steps I didn't waste time knocking I grabbed the handle, and thankfully the door was unlocked, so I was able to rush inside I apologized to the homeowners for barging in like that, but once they looked out their window they understood to this day. I still don't think that Bear was trying to attack me if it wanted to get me it was more than fast enough, if I had to guess it probably had cubs nearby, 
and was trying to scare me off still aisle. Never forget the look of those teeth as they charged toward me. 